good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our Daily Design Innovation Month webcast. My name is Chris Dubuque. I'm one of the application engineers with Computer Aided Technology located far out west in our Portland, Oregon office. So I'm going to be helping out today's presenter behind the scenes. Uh, before we get started, I do like to touch on just a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, first, I have everyone's audio muted, and I ask to please keep yourselves muted. The reason for that is we are actively recording this webcast. We record all of our webcasts, and they're all uploaded to the computer-aided technology portion of YouTube. I will send that link out here through the WebEx chat. Um, give us a couple of days to process the video from WebEx and get it uploaded to YouTube. Uh, all these Design Innovation Month webcasts will be put into a playlist aptly called Design Innovation Month 2019. So you'll be able to check out all the webcasts that we've done. Um, today's presenter is Ryan Daly, uh, the PLM Solutions Manager with Inflow Technology. I will let him get into everything here. So Ryan, take it away, please. All right, great. Thank you, Chris. So uh, good morning, everybody. And um, today we're going to be taking you through uh, some, some demonstration here of Web 2. And of course, if you do have any questions as we are going, feel free to throw those in chat. Um, we'll have plenty of time at the end to answer those questions. And uh, so that way you guys get some immediate feedback on, on what you see here today. Uh, so to kind of kick us off, you know, just, uh, you know, here at Computer A Technology, uh, we really specialize in getting the best solutions for our clients. So whether it's um, items on the design side with things like 3D CAD, technical communications through tools like Composer, or even in the realm of simulation and analysis through tools like, like SOLIDWORKS Simulation. Now we have lots of different solutions for a lot of different problems that, that our clients face. And of course, we also do delve into the 3D printing side of our business along with reverse engineering through 3D scanning. But what we are here to discuss today is all about data management. And in particular, we're going to be talking about SOLIDWORKS PDM. Now, as uh, Chris mentioned earlier, there is a team with inside of CATI called Inflow Technology, and we specialize specifically in all things related to data management. Now, of course, today, we're going to be focusing on one aspect of SOLIDWORKS PDM, which is PDM Web 2. And we'll be going through and telling you today about you know, what exactly is Web2, how it can help you out you know, within your business for you know, folks who already have SOLIDWORKS PDM. And then we'll actually, we'll show you the tool, give you a little bit of a day in the life and uh, go through all the features that are available through, through that interface. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, we'll have uh, time for some Q&A. And of course, you know, go ahead and fill up that chat with as many questions you guys might have. I'll even see if I can answer some of those as we go through the presentation. So to start us off, you know, what is Web2? Now, Web2, simply put, is a lightweight or thin client for PDM Professional. Now, the important thing here is PDM Professional. This is not available through the PDM Standard Package. It is one of the benefits of going to PDM Professional. Well, some of the great things about it is that it doesn't require any client-side installation. This is all hosted from a server running Microsoft IIS, or Internet Information Services. Microsoft IIS is a free tool that's available for whether you have um, a Microsoft server, or you can even get it through um, your basic Windows, like Windows 10, or even uh, Windows 7. And it does support all major web browsers. So that's an important point. This is a web-based tool that can be accessed through tools like Chrome, Edge, um, Firefox, as you'll see here during our demonstration, and ma many of the other major web browsers that are available out there today. And uh, looks somewhat like this. Of course, we will get much more into the interface to feel for it. But as you can see, it, it has a lot of the same look and feel of the regular PDM client through its ribbon at the top, the buttons to check it and out, and our Explorer-like interface to click through folders and interact with, with files. Now, of course, uh, Web2 has been available with PDM Professional since about 2015. 
prior to that, there was a the original web client, which is why this one's called Web2. And the new web client or Web2 is just a, been a lot more easier to deploy as uh, many of the same features as that original web client. And if any of you guys do have the original web client and would like more details on how they're different, again, please uh, chat and we'll take those as we go through. Now, there are some rules that go along with Web2 for how you interact with it. Uh, probably one of the most important ones is that to interface consumes licenses just like the regular client or the thick client. So just like how you have editors, contributors, and viewers, those same licenses that you have today are used when you're using this tool. It uses the same users and permissions that are inside of the regular PDM system. So really all you're doing is turning this on and it will behave just like the client with those same users and permissions. Now it will rely on the server's local view. So when you install this, it will use the local view on that machine to do things like help generate the previews, helps you with checking in and downloading files. So it does use the regular client behind the scene, um, which is installed on the same machine that you're hosting Web to from, and we'll get into those details at the end of the presentation. Now, one thing I do like to point out is that if you have many users using the web interface, it might be beneficial for you to have multiple servers, because again, it is going to be using one local view to serve all the people connected to that server. So if you have dozens or maybe even hundreds of users coming in using the web portal, it might be good for you to spread that out across multiple servers um, where you can have dedicated hardware to handle those users. Now, what can PDM Web 2 do? Now, what it's best at is viewer access. So if you have a lot of users out there, whether they are the field service out on the road or um, where we see this most commonly used is manufacturing environments where you might have you know, dozens of workstations out on the floor and you need to give access to all those users. By using this tool, you don't have to go around and install PDM on all those machines. All you do is supply them with a link and they'd be able to get access to the tool like we'll show you here in just a moment. It's also mobile friendly. So if you use an iOS device or an Android device, you can use this to get access to the PDM system. There are some limitations, but if you're going to be using this as a view only portal, it's a great use on mobile devices. And we even have some of our clients that use this for vendor and supplier access or for intermittent remote users, such as folks who may work from a home office or come in over VPN. This is a good way for them to get access to the system if, for whatever reason, the regular client uh, will not work for them. So we do see a lot of folks who might give temporary access to outside users. They will we'll just need to give them a way to get either onto your network or to get access to this web portal. Again, we'll touch on that a little bit more towards the end. So what we'll be doing here next is we're actually going to go into the tool, start showing how you can use it, how it works, and of course, um, you know, hopefully answer some of those questions that you guys have. So what I'm going to do here is I'm switching over to a virtual environment that's running all the components of PDM, including Web2. Now, to get access to Web2, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, all you need is a link to the system. So here I'm going to go ahead and open up my web browser. Here I'm using Firefox. We find currently Firefox gives us the best performance. Here I'm just going to go ahead go to a bookmark they have here for Web2. Now, the address that you use for this can be customized. Right now, I'm using uh, the one that's on, onto this server. Now, here, I can pick vault I want to log into. In this case here, I have just one. If you had multiple vaults, you could have a dropdown here, and you can pick which vault you wish to log into. Secondly, you can pick which type of license you want to take. So you could be coming either as a web user or a viewer. And I'll touch on that a little more at the end. Come in as a web user, which give me all the access 
to the system. Here I have uh, my login credentials. And if I click remember me, it will remember my login for a set period of time that is set up behind the scenes. So here I'll just go ahead and log in. And when I do that, it takes me into the root of my particular vault. So you'll see your top of the folders, any files that are in there. Right now in this vault, it's a very simple interface where I have uh, just a handful of folders set up. We'll go ahead and maximize that. Here across the top, you can see I have uh, a breadcrumb trail here. So I'm at the very root of my vault. We'll see this change as we start navigating through the system. Over here on the far side, we have our search tool. From here, the search tool in this system is a bit different than what we have inside of regular uh, PDM. Here we have just a keyword search. And what properties to search on, again, is part of the configuration of web. So in here, if I type in like a description or you know some basic text, it will search all the variables I have set up and give me returns. And I'll, I'll show you that here in just a bit. But from here, you could from the current folder, current in all subfolders, or all folders with inside the system. This button over here, our plus symbol. It's for when you want to create a brand new folder with inside the system, assuming you have rights to do so. This is also used for check-in and check -in file structure, which again, we'll show you when we add some files to the vault. And lastly here, we have our ability to control our user. So here you can do things like control what language is used inside of the interface. You can also use this to get access to help and to log out from the system. So here we also have a series of buttons that will become uh, available to us once we get into the system. And we'll see the available options here change as we go through. So the first thing I'll do, here, I'll start digging in to some folders. So here I have a designs area. When I click on that, you can see I get a little bit of a progress wheel and it will show me the folders within. As I click through here, you see here, Word document, and here is a folder that has a series of files. So in here, again, we can see whether they're Word documents, other file types, they're all kind of give us a quick icon here to help us understand what these different files are. And you can also see things like who has it checked out, what the status is, and other things here across the top. And again, this can all be customized um, by default particular column set that's used by the web viewer. Also from here, I do have some settings. So if I want to turn on and off different items for my user, do that. So if I don't maybe want to see days on state, I can clear that out or I can add again to customize the view. But all the available items here are controlled by the column set that we set up when we configure the system. So now once I want to, you know, get more information about a particular file, I can select it like this particular assembly here. And across the top, you can see I have my group breadcrumbs. So I can see I'm in the design data folder for project number two under designs within the manage vault. So if I ever want to change or get back, I can simply click within my breadcrumbs and it will take me back to that particular folder. So here, once again, I have this particular assembly selected. And I can see here I'm in my preview. Now immediately it's going to show me a static preview here just to make it quicker to load up. And over here on the right hand side, I can see some basic information like what workflow it's in, what version this is, um, when it was last modified, its size, those basic things that we expect to see with inside the preview tab. Now from here, I could also do things like change state, check out, download, and delete. Of course, these are all controlled by our permissions with inside the system. So right now I'm logged in as the administrator, so I'm able to do all these different activities. If you were not allowed to, to do those, you would either not see it, or when you clicked on it, it would not perform a particular action. Now here within the preview, if I select this icon here, it's going to give me my interactive preview. So now this interactive preview is one of the benefits or one of the uh, changes that we've had within the last couple versions of PDM. So this was first made available in 2019, giving us the more advanced previewer. But in 2020, we get some additional benefits as well on the performance side. 
So once this is loaded up, I can interact with it. I can rotate it. And of course, um, being that this is on WebEx and using a VM, it's maybe not as smooth as you would see on, uh, on your system. But essentially, it allows you to interact. It allows you to select particular items, and you can make changes to the way the view looks. So if I want to get back to the default, I could click Home, and it'll take me to the view that was set up for use inside of eDrawings. I can also animate those views. So this will take us through the basic rotation uh, of all the different views that are set up for this particular component. And if you have other views set up with inside of this component, you would see those here as well. Now I can also uh, you know, zoom in, of course, on different elements. I can change my view settings. So if I do want you know, a depth applied to it, or here, what real view turned on, so I could get you know, even better quality of image here. I have control over that, as well as getting to our different standard views and our different display types here. So you can also go full screen. So if you did want to work, you know, especially if you're on a tablet and you want to show this to somebody or get better um, a, just you know, a better view of what this is. You could do that with inside a full screen. Now, beyond that, I have the ability to control you know which components are here. I could hide certain ones if I wish, or when I click on them, it'll highlight them in the view. So it gives me a very good understanding of what these particular files are. And from here, I get hide and show, turn them transparent, show all, or hide all others. I can also do explode view. So if you have explode views defined, or if you wish to take to default, you could work with those with inside the drawings previewer. This also includes things like section view. So I can work through and you know, get a better idea of what's inside of this particular assembly. And I can also get access to my measure tool. So from here, I could do things like maybe I really want to measure edges. I can choose my units. It'll pick the default of whatever this particular item is drawn in. And I could come through here and select my different elements. And I could get that distance measurement all from within inside of the web client. So this makes it very easy for people who need to consume information about a particular assembly, drawing, or even non-CAD document. You could do right here from within inside the preview. And of course, lastly here, we have our move tool. So if I wish to grab and move something out of the way, I can do that as well. And of course, whenever I wanna get back to the way things are, I can click home and it will take me back to that main view. So the previewer here is probably the most interesting and powerful part of the Web2 client because it gives you a fully functional way to interact with your files directly from a web browser. Now, of course, we do have access to other tabs here as well. So here, if I select on like the data card, I will get a view of the data card. Now, of course, it's not quite the same as what you would see inside a full client, but it does follow the layout rules that you set up and will show you the different elements that are part of this particular items card. You can see the different configurations, you know, between default and Custom properties, so configuration specific or regular custom properties can be viewed from here as well. Now, new in 2020, we do have access to the built materials tab as well. And from here, we can do things like see our basic build material. If we do have different views, they would be available here. See our indented parts only, top level, and either the as built or the latest version of that build material. We can also switch configurations if we have different configuration uh, bills of material for different uh, configurations. So if you're in an earlier version of the tool, like 2019 or earlier, you simply won't have the bill of materials tab here. So that would be a benefit you would only get from the latest version of Web 2. From here, we can also see our contains tab. And again, our contains tab is showing us all the references within inside of this particular assembly. And this here is also where we can make selections to do things like change state or check out multiple items. More of that here once we get through the, the rest of these tabs. 
So obviously uh, where used is the opposite. So if I look at that, I can see that this particular assembly has a drawing that's associated with it. If I wanted to get to any of these items, I can select them. It'll give me a preview and I could go through the drawings tabs as well. And by selecting back, I could get back to where I was with the main assembly in my where used view. Also new for 2020, we do have the history tab now. So we are able to see when a file is created and the other activities that have happened with it. If you're in an earlier version, 2019 or earlier, again, the history tab will not be available to you. You can see here, it gives you almost all the features that you would see with inside of the normal thick client or the Windows Explorer client. Again, here in a lightweight version, right here with inside of, of a web browser. One thing I will point out, one thing that the Web2 tool cannot do is use templates. So if you use templates for creating folder structure or creating new files, that is one limitation of Web2. So really we say that this is best suited for folks who need to consume information or simply need to upload or download data. Now here, we'll go ahead and come back here to our design data folder. And we'll take a look at what this looks like for some other file types. So here, if I select like this document, a quick version to make a lightweight version, I'm able to see and scroll through the document itself right here using the previewer. So for this particular document, it's just a single page. So you can see here, I can scroll up and down. I could change my zoom in and get a feel for what this document is. If I scroll down here towards the bottom, I do have a PDF file here with multiple pages. So when I click on this, again, I can see here the full document. I can scroll, scroll through and see multiple pages for this PDF. If there's data card information or other you know, history that belongs to this file, all that can be viewed here again through the different tabs. So next, we're going to show you some of the actions that are available to you now that we've kind of gone through the navigation. So one thing we can do is check out files. So if I come here to this particular file here, this knob, if I wanted to make a change to it, I could certainly check it out. When I do that, you can see it happens very much instantly. So it's my name down here as a checked out by, and this allows me to be owner of this particular file. If I need to make a change to it, I would need to download it. And when I download, I get the option to either download the single file or download with all of its references. And when I do this, it will download it as a, either as a single part, which will download it here. Or if I download with references, it will give me an option to include any references and will download this as a zip file. Now I'll do this for a large, for a full assembly. So you see what that looks like. So here, if I cancel out my download, it takes me right back here. And if I want to undo that checkout, I can simply select that and it releases my ownership. So if I pop back here and maybe go to our main assembly, here, once again, I could do a download or a checkout. And when I do a checkout here, it's only checking out that main assembly. If I want to check out everything, I could come here to my contains tab, where I have access to all the items. I can click here to get everything, or you know, I can certainly unselect certain items if I don't wish to check them out. Here it shows that I have 60 items selected. And when I hit checkout, it will show me or check out all those different items as the admin. So now if I wish to download all those, I could download with references, which will allow me to get the entire package of models. And here I could choose to get the latest as referenced. I can preserve relative paths. So when I download it in the zip file, it'll have all the folder structure as it should. And I can include all these other items as well. So here, if I want to include drawings, it'll grab those as well. You can see those here in our hierarchy. I could scroll through to see all the items that could be part of my package. So when I download all that, 
it will create a zip package for me. It allows me to download it here using my web browser. So from here, you can see I can dig into the file structure. There are all my files that have been downloaded, and then I can open them with my SOLIDWORKS or whatever application you need to work with the files. And then when you're done, you would check them all back in. And when you do that, that is what performs our upload back into PDM. If it finds files that already exist, it'll go ahead and update those. If it is brand new files, it'll upload them to whatever directory you choose. I'll show you that here by adding some regular files to PDM. So now if I don't wish to bring these all back, I could simply undo the checkout and that will release ownership on those particular files. Now, of course, uh, one thing that I will point out uh, towards the end is that really uh, the web tool here is best suited for consuming information. It's not really here for being a full CAD user who's gonna be working on adding files and checking them um, back in and out. Really, we wanna be using the full client for that. But in a pinch or if you're remote and you really need to get to some files, you can still have that access here through the web on uh, web two. So next, what we can do here is show you how we could change state of all these different files. So here we can see all these files are in the development state. If I want to take them to the next stage of their development, I can come here to change state. So look at all those files that I have selected. And of course, you could do it individually or in mass like I did here. Here it's doing a check to make sure that you know, it has all the references. I have permission to do all these things. And it's gonna see what states are available for each of these different file types. So here you can see I can scroll through here and for each one of these, I can select a particular transition. Or at the top here, I can change them all and say that they all pass approval. So there are other options available. I would see those in the, in the dropdown. So that way I can pick and choose which ones I want to pass approval. Down here at the bottom, I could put in my comment and I could go ahead and change the state of all those different files. So now, as I mentioned before, it is using a local view on the server in order to do these actions. So really what the web browser here is doing is reporting back to me the results of what's happening on that local view on the server. So it gives us a bit of a hybrid approach that makes it very easy for us to set up, makes it easy for us to train end users as well because um, you know, they just need to learn this web interface that they're gonna be accessing through here. But we get all the benefits of using the full tool um, that is located on that server. Now, this'll take a few moments to update all, the, all those items because it's checking it behind the scenes. And you know we can give this just a few moments to finish up. So here, it looks like it was successful for all 61 files. It's gonna bring us back and show us all the files that were approved. Now, a couple of these files did not advance because I did not have uh, rights to do so. Files that I had selected went ahead and approved those particular items. If I come back here to my design data and actually I'm gonna pop up one more level to our documentation area, when I click in here, we can see there are no items. So whenever you find an empty folder, this is what it's gonna look like. Now, of course, if you want to add files to the system, you do that by uploading them through a check-in. So here I hit my little plus symbol. And from here, I can either create a new folder, check-in, or check-in file structure. When I do check-in, it's gonna ask me for what file to check-in. I check in file structure, asking what folder to add to the system. So here I could do a, here I'll show you the file structure. So here I can pop up and if I want to add the files for vault, I can upload and it's gonna bring in anything within inside of that folder. If I come here and do check in files, here it'll now show me the files within this particular folder. And from here, I can select multiples Go ahead and open 
and we can see these are now ready to be checked in to the vault. So here we have progress showing adding. So when it's done, it will flip that over. I can go ahead and add more files if I wish. If these are all the files that I want. I can hit check in. You see all those have been uploaded. And this is going to take me back to that folder view. So adding files is very simple. It's all done right through a check-in process. So here I can see now these are all in development stage. I'm able to click on these. I can preview them. Here, including things like DWG. So here we don't have a thumbnail. So when I go into the full version of eDrawings, it will show me that particular DWG file. So even for files that may not be SOLIDWORKS or especially at those non-CAD files, we'll be able to preview them here. So with that, that's a little bit of an overview of how we can use Web2. You saw how we can access the system by logging in through the web portal. We can click through folders, just like you do with inside of the regular client. Once you get to some files, you're able to select each of them, get a preview, view any of the card data, as well as be able to interact with the files through changing state, checking out, or even downloading the files so you could work with them on your local machine. Now, adding files is as simple as checking them into the system, and you can either check in files one at a time or as a whole folder and get those uploaded to the system. So next, we're going to talk a little bit about how you can add Web2 to your environment. Now, if what you saw here for you to um, interact with the system, now, one thing I will say here is what we're about to go through is not a step-by-step -step process to get this add to the system. It's just a high-level overview to help you understand kind of what it takes and if this is something that you would like to take on. Now, of course, if you would like help walking through this process, uh, we can help you troubleshoot if you have any issues. Of course, if you'd like us to take care of that for you, that is an option. So the first thing you do to add Web2 to your environment is you need to add Microsoft IIS to your server. So here you can see I'm in my dashboard. You would select to add roles and features. And going through that wizard, you come to adding a role where you would add the web server service. Now, all the things you need to check, all the step-by-step -step for all this is in the install guide for SOLIDWORKS PDM. If you are going to be adding this to a non-server, you can also download IIS separately directly from Solo, uh, sorry, from Microsoft. Next, you would install Web2 Server for PDM. To do this, you could either modify your existing PDM installation, and you'll see Web2 Server as an option. If you're on an older version of uh, PDM, that may not be available to you there, and that would be a, again, we can help you with that if need be through our support line. So once you do that, it will actually add everything you need into IIS. So it will set up your website. It will do virtually everything you need. There's just a small amount of configuration uh, to match it up to how you want the system to behave. So step three, you will configure Web2. The first thing you do is you need to modify a web.config file. So this is probably um, the scariest part of the setup. But essentially here, you just need to identify which vaults are going to be part of the system. Again, this is covered in the install guide. Next, you would need to set up your settings inside of IIS. And then here is where you set things up, like, do people have the ability to choose what license type to use? Can they do free search? Can they uh, be remembered? How many days are they remembered when they log in? And some other basic settings to help you control the experience for the Web2 users. After that, you would test. So you would select Browse inside of IIS. That will bring up the web page that you saw me in earlier, 
and that will allow you to test the system. Now, things like being able to assign it a proper address, things like that, um, we can help you out with if need be. But ideally, the system is used internally, so there's no need for like creating a DMZ and getting a web address from your ISP. You know, it's more uh, network admin things that you need to worry about as the vast majority of our clients are not exposing this to the internet. Mostly this is used as an internal tool where people would either be on the network or come in over VPN. But of course, if you did want to expose this to the internet, you can do that. Of course, there are some guidelines that you do want to follow to for security purposes. Now, there are some frequently asked questions that we could kind of maybe cover really quickly here. So, does Web2 add cost to PDM? The short answer is no, it is an included feature. The exception would be, of course, if you wanted any assistance with setting it up, uh, there would be a service or consulting fee associated with that. But everything you need to get this set up is in the install guide as part of SOLIDWORKS PDM. What kind of licenses does Web2 use? Now, Web2 does use the existing pool license that you have. So when you log in as a viewer through Web2, it is consuming a viewer license. If you select a web license type through Web2, it will take a contributor license or license. If you have contributors, it will consume those first and then consume editors if those are available. Or if you don't have any contributor licenses, it will use editor licenses instead. So there is a risk here, of course, if you have a lot of web users, they could potentially eat into your editor licenses. Now, of course, we don't want that to happen. There's some configuration we could do to help prevent that, but it is a risk if you do turn on this system. So the, we'll want to be uh, careful of that. Now, of course, what you typically follows after that is, is there a license timeout? And yes, there is. It's a 20 minute per session. So this uses uh, the way that the web consumes licenses is a little different than the regular system. So it, it is per session. So um, you could theoretically consume multiple licenses if you start multiple sessions on your computer. So every time you hit that login screen, it's going to consume a license. And that 20 minutes is hard coded. It can't be adjusted using FlexLM like you can with, with the normal licenses. So that 20 minutes is, is baked into the system. So can Web2 be used by CAD users? And the answer is yes, but it's not recommended. And you want to be using the full client so you get the add-in as part of SOLIDWORKS where the add-in will not work with Web2. Too, while it can get you all the references, it can essentially give you everything you need. The ability to download and upload is far more clunky than the way it would be with the regular client. So again, Web2, while technically, yes, you can use it for CAD use, we would only recommend that for very light use or for read-only applications. Really, the main target for Web2 is for mobile use or for viewer use uh, across a large organization. We did have a question come in over chat here. And uh, the question was, is there ability for admins to require users to have complex passwords and require resetting a password? So that is today, this will follow the exact same rules as PDM. So it uses the same um, method of resetting the password, it uses the same kind of authentication. So you can use the same complexity as you can with inside of PDM. So that being said, if it's tied to your Windows account, it would have the same requirements as what you have inside of Active Directory. So if you require complex passwords, do those passwords reset over time that is handled through your Active Directory policies? Um, so right now it does not support double authentication. And um, of course that is a feature that is desired. So with the current release of 2020, you do not have the ability to do double authentication through Web2 or through PDM as a whole. So with that, you know, I'd like to thank you all for your time today.